police hurry to America's House of Representatives in Washington following an attack by three Puerto Ricans, including Rafael Miranda, Andres Condero, and the woman member of the trio, Lolita Lebron, are hustled away from the menacing crowd. Firing more than 20 rounds from their Luger automatics, the three fanatics seriously wounded five senators. My grandmother uh, had told me, Lolita, that she would, one of her dreams was that I would write her biography. But the more I wrote about her, the more I wrote about myself, mm -hmm. and the more my mother kept showing up as well. So one day I, I, I realized this has to be a testimony and it has to be the three of us. And she's like, if you publish that book, the movement won't forgive you. I said, but Lolita, who cares about the movement? You're my grandmother. And she says, well, yo soy el movimiento. I'm Irene Vilar, author, activist, founder of the America's Latino Eco Festival, and mother of two Enes. When people ask me, you know, sum up your life, um, it's interesting because I've written a thousand pages about it in two memoirs. I would say it is the struggle for self-redemption and the eradication of shame. So this version of Café Con Leche is my mother's version. Very similar. The only difference is that um, my mother didn't have an espresso machine. I grew up in Palmas Altas, which is a little part of a town called Barceloneta. My mother and Lolita, her mother, all of them come from, from Lares, from this kind of revolutionary town um, and filled with coffee. For me, Café con Leche uh, was to, uh, it was a time where the generations, you know, the differences were bridged. I feel that when, when my mother or my grandmother Irene would make Café con Leche, you know, it would be this whole ceremony and then sitting down and eating it. And together we would share this. And it was like some, at that moment I was like them. <laughs> I was a dreamy, lonely, happy, sad child. I grew up with, um, with a wonderful, loving mother up to the age of five. And then I was the child of a de manic, depressed woman. And then she was also a suicide who had tried many times to, to die until she finally succeeded at it when I was eight. Uh, by throwing herself out of a moving car. I came to this country as a, as a nine-year-old. And so my first experience of this country was through my mother's stories of how horrifying this country was and what it had done to the island, to, to the independence movement. And then I get the second part of the, the, the other part of this country. And it was amazing that then when I meet my current husband, it was through that connection, it was really the way he touched my most internal wound that allowed my heart to open up and go beyond those prejudices. I think one of my biggest passions is to cultivate connectedness. In being connected to your cultural origins, it expands your world. It just makes it bigger. When you go through the experiences that I've gone through, and when you add up the, the actual immigrant experience as well into that, you know, to come to a new country, to learn a new language, to feel alone, you are often outside your body, not fully connected. When all those physical chain blocks are disappearing. Language for me is the home I willfully, you know, fashion out for myself. And I needed that to be passed on to my kids because I see myself in them. The birth of my children are the only two times I know I was totally here. It's really looking at parenting and parenthood 
as a form of art, as, a, as an artistic text where the rules of the game need to be learned because it is a form of art.